Hi everyone, it's Toby. Thank you for joining me. Today we're having a look at stone paper. So this is kind of the ultimate eco paper. No trees involved, 100% recycled, um, and it's got some really interesting properties. Uh, it's incredibly heavy. So these, these books weigh two, three times more than you'd expect them to when you hold them. Um, and I've got two companies here, one by Cast and one by Etched. Um, and we will see what they are like. We'll see what the um, the papers here are like. So uh, the first thing is just to be aware that these are completely different. So as well as being totally eco-friendly, they are also incredibly heavy, very thin, but hard wearing. You can't really rip them very easily. Um, and they are 100% waterproof, 100% waterproof. And that means our watercolours act very differently. It means our inks act very differently. So today we're going to have a look at exactly what that means. I've used these papers not as a regular thing, but as a sort of um, holiday thing, let's say. It's a fun sketchbook to take away when you're in a sort of low risk situation where you can just try things out. And it took me a long while to try and work out how I think is best to use them. But when I did, I was really enjoying the results. Uh, but it's not the same. So let's have a little look. In this video, we'll test out our water, our ink, our watercolours, and do a little sketch. Let's just see what happens. So what we're going to do with this paper is a series of little tests. We're going to test it with ink, with water, with watercolours. We're going to look at how the colours, the water and the ink interact and move, and just how this paper handles different things. And then, of course, we will do a little sketch. And we'll see how the sketching process is different. Um, interesting, exciting and frustrating in equal measure. But let's start with water. So I'm just going to take a big brush. Now this is thin paper, this is very thin. Um, the, the, the weight of it is actually very heavy. And the thing about this paper is that it's totally waterproof, well, supposedly, and I can actually confirm I've used it before, it is totally waterproof. So what happens if we put water on it with a big brush? Well you can see that the water doesn't really spread, it goes in these blobs, it goes, it stick, it keeps its surface tension. And instead of getting a smooth coating of water or an absorbent wet bit of paper, what we have is blobs of water everywhere. I can probably demonstrate that if I just try and drop some watercolour in, you'll see it doesn't flow all over the page. It has to find its way through all these blobs. So we haven't got like a continuous flow of colour. We've got just a sort of little discontinuous series of little drops of colour and water all over the page. Now that's important because it means we can't do a wet on wet approach of painting can we? Because we can't make we can't make the paper wet. We can only make the paper have some surface water on it. Something interesting to note as well is it doesn't matter how much water I put on here the paper doesn't buckle. In fact, it's totally, totally waterproof. Look, you can have a pool of water on there and all that's going to happen is the water is going to run off. So how does this paper handle water fundamentally differently to watercolour paper is the answer. It literally is totally waterproof and that will have a little bit of ramification when it comes to using our inks as well. So our inks, what happens with ink when we use it? Well, let's try a few different things. So the first thing I'm going to do is simple line with a fine liner. This is a 0.03 mil fine liner. And immediately I'm going to come in with a brush and see what happens. And look, these fine liners, I'm sure you know, they're very waterproof. And actually, they're being mostly waterproof here. Mostly, but you can see a little bit all well, that colour is moving, a little bit of the intensity of the line is lost. But broadly speaking, it's actually kept its its line quite well. It's kept its ink in one spot. So what about if we try something a bit different? What if we try soluble ink in a fountain pen? So again, let's do a few lines backwards and forwards. You can see this is some brown ink, brown waterman ink. And if we come straight in, well, this time, completely different story. This ink really will move. In fact, it will move so much that you can essentially lift it completely. You can basically remove the evidence of that ink ever being there. 
And if we lift it a little bit and move it around, we can create quite a nice smooth kind of flat wash. Equally, we can come in, we can do our little taking the ink out and just popping it on like this. And again, we can move it around loads because this, this, this paper is waterproof. It just sits on top. So until this ink is dry, um, it's, it's just going to flow and move as, as much as we want it to. What about with carbon black ink, which is a very waterproof ink? So normally using this, I can draw on it within 30 seconds, a minute, and it is basically waterproof. Maybe it will leak a tiny bit. What happens here? Well, if I go too quickly, it moves quite a bit, quite a bit. But unlike this water soluble ink, while there is a bit of this ink lifting, I can't scrub away the line. I can't lift the line. So it's reasonably waterproof still. Um, perhaps it just needs a bit longer to dry. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just let these lines dry and then apply water to them again and see what happens. So give me five minutes um, and I'll be back. And there we go. We are dry. And it's interesting to know the drying pattern. Because this is dried, basically is surface water and then settled, where the inks and things have lifted, the drying is very different to watercolour paper. It just dries at the with these edges, and that's where the edges of the water were before they evaporated from the page. But what happens now with a bit of water? Well, let's just take a wet brush and drag it down the page. Well, the fine liner, that's, that's settled, hasn't it? This as well, the permanent ink, I think that's pretty much settled as well. So these are both definitely waterproof on this paper. Now the soluble ink, look, it's just as liftable as it ever was. So it can still just be totally lifted, moved, can probably lift all this as well. Yeah, so look, water soluble ink on this paper, it's definitely water soluble. You're not gonna, you know, you can just move it and push it around as long as you want. So these are acting very similar in many ways to what it would on watercolor paper or normal cartridge paper. This water soluble ink has had its water solubility sort of amped up, turned up about 20 levels. And that brings us on to test number three, watercolors. So what happens with watercolors? Well, watercolors obviously need water and we've already seen what happens with water. It just sits on the surface. So if we take even quite thick watercolor and just drag our, our brush across really quickly, you can see it just, it doesn't act like normal watercolor. It doesn't absorb into the page at all. Do it with another colour, and you can see it just sits in these little blobs. What happens if we go a bit slower? Well, if we're slow and careful, we still get this kind of surface tension of the water, and we can even drag our brush across and leave nothing there. So you can see the water is on the brush, but the surface tension of that water isn't letting it leave. So this leads us to a really fundamentally different way of painting. Really, really different. If we get enough water and pigment on our page, we can then slowly, really slowly, get that water to actually settle. But it is a slow process. It's a really different, really slow process. You can do it with different pigments. And I found some do settle better than others. So that red is particularly poor at settling. Some of these heavier pigments seem to be better. So this Green Appetite Genuine is doing all right. And then let's try some other things. So let's try Luna Black, a very granulating pigment. What happens if we just pop that on the page? So again, you can see it's having difficulty settling. It's kind of following us around, moving around. But let's see if it actually eventually granulates at all. Same with some Luna Earth. Well, that one's actually settling quite nicely. But again, let's see two things. One, how long does this take to dry? And two, do we get granulations and things appearing as it dries? And I suppose the third thing is, do they stay dry? Are they waterproof when they're down? Or are these going to be really liftable and movable like these water-soluble inks? So as an update, I've been sat around for about 10 minutes and you can probably tell these watercolours are still very wet. So if I even put my finger in, 
I'll be able to move it, move them fundamentally all across the page. So we'll see how much longer they take. But this is a, a little snapshot of why the way the water sits on top of the page is yet another way that it makes it really difficult to understand and predict how your colours are going to act and just how long they're going to take to dry. And another, well, I, I actually lost track of time, but I think it's another 15 minutes. And the watercolours are dry, so I can touch them in most places. They're still somewhere, but in most places, and they're, they're dry. Um, what we can see, actually, some of the granulation here is really lovely. So it does still produce those, those textures. Um, the watercolours have dried really vibrant. Look how punchy these are. I'm, I'm not even sure that they've lost very much of their vibrance at all, which is unusual because watercolours, of course, normally dry quite pale. But a couple of questions for us. So normally watercolours are waterproof when they are dry. That means we can come over and layer across them. And that's actually a key part of watercolour painting, being able to layer up. Now what happens with these? If I just take a wet brush, so like I did over here, wet brush, what happens with the watercolours? So let's see. And as suspected, they are not waterproof. So again, this is fundamentally different. We can almost entirely lift these colours up. So this yellow has stained the page a little bit. So Hansi yellow that I use is, is a slightly staining colour. Cobalt is not a staining colour, so the cobalt is lifted completely. Scarlet Lake is a staining colour, so that will probably, yeah, this leaves a bit more of a pink on the page. So our staining colours are leaving a permanent mark. Our non-staining colours are just totally liftable. If we just take something else, let's take a little bit of fallow blue, something we haven't used yet, and try and layer over the top. Well, actually, if we're gentle, if we're really gentle, we can get a layering effect. But look how that that red is lifted still. So that red is still, even with a really gentle brush stroke, that red is still coming up. And I imagine it'll be the same over here. So yeah, look how that yellow, even with a really gentle layering brush stroke, we've now got green. We haven't got blue and yellow layered. We've got mixed green on the page. So that is the end of my watercolor test. And the next thing we're gonna do is a sketch. We're just going to go for it and I'll show you what I think is the best, most interesting, most fun way of sketching with this particularly different paper. So our scene. Our scene is a, a little village from the Cotswold called Stow on the Wold. And what I'm actually going to be using is something you don't see me use a lot, which is a uh, ink pen, an ink roller pen. Um, and why this pen? It's a V-Pilot. It's got uh, liquid ink inside, which is water soluble and the reason I am using this is actually because I found water soluble ink bizarrely the most effective way of sketching on this paper so let's just sketch and see why and this is just gonna be a really simple quick sort of 10 minute sketch give or take so what I found because that watercolor is so movable actually just going with it, just actually leaning in to that effect, sort of going with that effect, was far easier than trying to pretend it was something it wasn't. This paper is waterproof. So just play with the natural tendencies of the paper. And that is why I found this water-soluble pen far easier to use. And the same would work with water-soluble ink in a fountain pen. Um, so. All I'm doing at the moment is my normal processes. This is just normal sketching. What I'm not going to try and be is super detailed. And why not? Because, well, think about it. This paper is water, waterproof. So when we add water, we've already seen, well, this ink, it might end up anywhere. It might end up anywhere on the page, off the page. You know, it's just totally um, uh, movable just for a long time. So all I'm doing is I'm trying to outline the key elements of the scene and actually the rest of it's going to stay so flexible for so long. Uh, just get the, the key other side of the scene here and over here, little windows. And let's get the idea of the curve. But even that, I think, even the curve is probably a little bit pointless because when we come back uh, with our little brush, 
everything's just going to move. And we just got to accept that. So the next stage, having done a really simple, really undetailed line drawing, the next stage that I found to sketching on this kind of paper was to just start getting some of those shadows because this, this ink will just move and bend and just flop around for us. And it means we can now start to get some like, immediate mood. We can make corrections where our lines are wrong because we can basically remove them if we want. Um, also, this gets the, the paper wet in the right places for our watercolour. What it's doing is it's sort of breaking up some of that surface tension. So when we come and add the watercolour, it's got places to go. It's not just going to sort of sit in those little bubbles on the page. Might even want to just get the whole of this road wet if we can. But again, look, we're falling into that problem where the, the paper's waterproof. So it's all just sort of sitting there. And then we've got lots of shadow over this side. So let's just see if we can just gently sort of tone down basically the whole of this side. And again, look, they, just having that ink in there, I may be totally wrong about the reasons, but having the ink in there, seems to break up some of the surface tension of that water and it just makes it settle more easily. And now you may recognize this style. This is basically what I like doing when I'm out and about with a, a water soluble fountain pen. What we've got is a, just a, a really quick, easy tonal sketch. And now we're gonna have fun straight away with our watercolors. Why straight away? Because I want to use this surface water for my watercolors to bend and move. And I'm just going to do really simple colours. So let's do a little bit of Hansi yellow mixed with some quinacridone sienna and just use that in some of these areas where we've already got water. And do you see how it just blends and merge, merges really easily? But where we've got dry paper, it's not so easy to get it to just sit and behave itself really. If we wanted to get this side dark and shadowy, well, we've already got that ink there. And maybe what we want to do is just get something else dark, so a little bit of indigo. We can probably just drop that in. And because the paper's got this surface water on, that indigo is just going to move everywhere. So it may even move way further than we want it to. We're not really going to know what's going to happen, but also we can't really control it. So if we try and move it around, it will gradually blend and merge, maybe, hopefully. What can we do next? Well, let's go to the other side. Let's just get a little bit of this warmth in on top of this sort of grey scene. And again, look, where we've just pushed all that ink around, we've really lost a lot of the lines. Not all of them, but a lot of the lines have, have lost and sort of disappeared a bit. Let's get some, some of that granulation in. So a little bit of this lunar earth. That lunar earth um, perhaps is representing, this is a Cotswold scene, so some lovely Cotswold stone being represented in, in the scene with this lunar earth as it granulates. Down here, if we squint, that's probably the area with the highest value. It's got that ink already, but let's just add a little bit of our indigo and let that move around as well. And so actually, because we lent into the scene, because we lent into um, the idea that this is waterproof paper, that everything's going to move, by letting everything move, the process has become quite enjoyable, quite easy, uh, very different, but not um, not strenuous. If we then try and do a little bit of a sky, what happens? So this is just cobalt blue. And the difficulty is if it touches those buildings, we're going to get this huge sort of texture flowing up into the sky. So we can already see some of this ink really, really flowing high into the sky. And it, it, again, it's different to watercolour paper where it would bloom up gently. Here it, it floats across the surface of the water, so it produces a very different effect. And I think that is probably enough done for this first layer. Maybe a little bit more of that blue in the shadows down here. But let's just see what happens. See how long this takes to dry and then come in with our next kind of touches. Worth remembering, of course, that if we add any more watercolour to this, all that's going to happen is it's going to lift the watercolour which is already there. So when we come back to add more of something, we're going to have to be very careful and very cautious about exactly what we're doing. 
And here we go, we are mostly dry. The edges aren't dry, but all of this is touch dry. And you can see this kind of ghostly feel it has, all these, again, it's just the shapes of the bubbles of water on the surface, the way it dries. It just deposits the pigment in those shapes. So it has this really otherworldly, crazy feel. Now let's just try a tiny bit more colour. Let's see if we can get some punches of colour. Just see what happens. So I, I notice we've got this nice little yellow sign. I'm going to drop some yellow in there. I notice we've got this red car. Let's just try and produce that red car. And let's maybe pop some of that same red in a few little dots on chimneys. I know they're not really there, but just to balance the image out a little bit. Same with this yellow. Let's let's get some road markings, for example. And actually, if we're being really gentle, and also look, using quite thick paint for these road markings, what you find is you can be quite specific. And also these, because these are very small drops with small amounts of water, I can actually see they're almost drying. They're almost drying in front of my eyes. And we haven't um, ended up lifting that underlying colour. Admittedly, we've only done very small touches. I might repeat that process just to get some more shadows perhaps. And just try coming underneath some of these eaves with a little bit of our previous quinacridone mix and just see what happens and again actually that's been all right that's that's worked and it's i think because i've been very gentle and very specific i'm now just going to come and just rework some of this line work because it's, like we talked about it's just totally liftable so it's <laughs> almost entirely been lifted and moved and now is our opportunity just to re-envisage it reimagine it and just again pick those lines which are working adapt to some of the funky shapes which have happened without our you know without our express permission they just you know watercolor and this paper have done what they wanted to do and we can just come around really quickly and just respond to all of that adding in a few more details so we left out details at the beginning knowing that this paper you know wasn't going to care if we wanted our details to stay or not they were going to move and now we can add them back in what we then can't do is add any more water because all that's going to do is basically move all these details again it's just going to be us having a very circular argument with this paper which i'm not interested in i want to work with my with my tools with my equipment with my supplies not against them not have fights just relax enjoy myself and you know if i want to personify the paper i'll let the paper enjoy itself as well I'll let the paints enjoy themselves as well and there we go. I am going to break one rule that I said I wasn't going to do, touch any more water in because I would like to get some of these lovely greens in. And actually what hopefully will happen is these greens will pick up just a little bit of that ink, take on a bit of moodiness, and then we can call ourselves done. A little bit of a blue flash in the sky. And perhaps down here. And there's our scene. So I'm just going to sign it. And just like that, we are done. Let me know in the comments what you think of this paper. Have you tried it before? Is it something you're going to try in the future? And of course, if you are interested in my kind of style, if you want to find out more about my sketching, come and join me on my courses, www.sketchloose.co.uk. There's also a free 10 day sketching course that you can join right there. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.